after we'd been in the Philippines about 10 years, um, one day I was talking to one of our pastors from a group called the Tagakaolo. He was a pastor up in the mountains. And uh, he was telling me about these problems that his family was having. They were all getting sick. They'd moved their house to a waterfall. And he said, all my relatives are telling me that there's a spirit that owns the waterfall. And I, since I have not given, paid my respects to that spirit, uh, he's cursing us with all this illness. And a, a month or so before, I'd taken him to the hospital in the capital city where he had, a, he had a really bad case of typhoid. And so he says, we're not sure what to do because we, we're, we feel like we've got to do something about this because the spirit is, is cursing us. And at, at times like this, I would, I would try to think, well, what does the Bible say about stuff like this? I was always asking myself that question. Well, there, this was a Filipino belief that there were certain kinds of trees, there were certain, uh, sometimes rivers, certain places, there were territorial spirits or spirits that lived in a particular place. This was their belief. And it was a strong belief uh, backed by a lot of experience that to them was unquestioned. And we came to the place where we would just listen to stories. Sometimes we believe them. Sometimes we would think perhaps they were exaggerated. or But you had to take it seriously. So I asked this guy, I said, so what do you think the Bible says about this? And he said, the Bible doesn't say anything about spirits and waterfalls. I said, well, let's, let's think about that for a minute. Well, that morning in my devotions, I'd been reading out of the Psalms where it says God owns everything. And just as we were reflecting on that, I said, well, you know, I just read this verse. God owns everything, so he owns the waterfall. Now, the word that they used to describe the spirit living in the waterfall was um, a Cebuano word which meant owner. That, and this is how he, des how he described it. There's an owner of the waterfall, or sometimes they would talk about balati trees. They would say, balati trees are like banyan trees. He would say, there's a, they would say there's an owner of the balati tree, or there's an owner of this. And what they meant by that was, there's a spirit that dwells that, and you better not touch it, because that, even though that tree or waterfall may be on your property, but you don't really own that. The spirit owns that. So you have to be respectful. So I, I, I said, really the spirit, if God owns the waterfall, then the spirit in that waterfall isn't the owner of the waterfall. He's a squatter. In the Philippines, squatters have lots of rights. There's millions and millions of squatters and some national politician figured this out and created laws that appealed to them so that he could get their votes. So squatters have a great deal of rights in the Philippines. But I said to him, I said, you know, in the kingdom of God, squatters don't have rights. That's just a Filipino thing. But with God, God owns this. And if you are a child of God, then this is your inheritance. So this spirit is just a squatter and he doesn't have rights. So you don't, so you should not treat him as if he is the owner because that's a lie. All of this belief system is based in a lie. When I said that that way, the guy was like, oh, you're right. The next day I was going to be out at this church with one of one of our best pastors, in fact, he's one of the best pastors I've ever met. He's a really great guy, Filipino guy. And I said, I want to tell you something that I said yesterday. So I told him the same story. And when I told him that story, he was like, wait. He says, I, I got to get a pencil and paper. I've got to write this down. Say that again because I want to write down what you just said. What happens in worldview is that that at times worldview and even the language that we use to describe that worldview promotes a lie. It promotes something that is not biblical. Even in the United States, we have this stuff. We have, okay, all good things must come to an end. 
Well, heaven's a good thing. Heaven doesn't come to an end. So that, that statement is not exactly true. But we say that all the time and apply it to other things. But, but what we have to do, and this is what you have to really do as a missionary, is you have to, when, when you confront something like, okay, spirits living in trees, you have to ask yourself, okay, what do they believe about this? And understand, and try to understand it from their point of view, not from your own particular worldview point of view. Uh, on that particular issue, because what they do, what you're supposed to do when you've offended a spirit in a waterfall or a tree or whatever, you, you take a white chicken and you sacrifice it and the blood somehow wipes away this curse and resolve, and, and, and see, from my point of view as an American, well, that's worshiping spirits, but from their point of view, that wasn't worship, that was just reconciliation. And in the Philippines, uh, smooth interpersonal relationships are one of the highest values, and you, you reconcile with people who have bodies this way, and you reconcile with bodiless persons like spirits and trees in a different way so they see it as reconciliation and i was seeing it as worship so you really have to understand their point of view then i think i think it is important for you to sit down and say okay what does my culture believe about this and americans are very uncomfortable with with spirits and trees even believers are uncomfortable with spirits and trees and i believe that the reason that Americans are that way is because we have a worldview that's been heavily influenced by science, sometimes overly influenced by science. So when I talk to Americans about certain things, um, some of them will go, oh, they just laugh it off. And I go, wait, 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 you don't always laugh this off because I do believe that there are evil spirits in the world and why couldn't they live in trees if they want to, you know? So you have to understand what, what might, and I think it is important to understand your own worldview and how you see it and deal with some of those issues in your own heart that could stand in the way of you, of you being effective with people. The, the third thing then you have to do is decide, okay, what does, what does their culture believe? What does my culture believe? What does the Bible say? And that can, that can't, that can be easy at times. At times it can be very difficult because you've got a lot of, things that aren't exactly covered in the Bible. A great example of that would be cigarettes. You know, cigarettes aren't exactly covered in Scripture. So you have to start looking at principles or other things. And then there's a fourth thing. You have to decide, how do I talk about it? And there was something that day about me saying that the Spirit doesn't own the waterfall. He's a squatter that really communicated to Filipinos. The idea of squatter is a huge issue in the Philippines. And that somehow really resonated with them. So these are the issues when you're dealing with worldview that are important to go through. And it takes a long time. Uh, one guy who was our language expert for many, many years said it takes about five years to really be comfortably fluent in a second language. And it and it takes an additional five years to really begin to, generally, to begin to understand worldview and understand how to apply scripture to their worldview and to do it in a way that resonates and makes sense to them according to their logic. There's a lot of issues here that you have to learn to deal with. And that's at that particular time, I had seen the problem with spirits in trees from almost my first year in the Philippines, but it took it wasn't until the 10th year that I was able to say it in a way that made sense to them, resonated with them, and really, and really depowered uh, the, the worldview in their minds.